In this video, we're going to use the virtual work equation to calculate the deflection and rotation of a cantilever. We're given a cantilever beam that is 8 meters long, is subject to a 10 kilonewton point load at its tip, so position B, and we're given the dimensions of the cantilever. We're not directly given the I value. Before we proceed any further, it's useful to remind ourselves of the formula that we developed in the previous video for the deflection of the cantilever. So we had 1 dot delta equals the integral over the length of the beam so of the moment function due to a unit load, the moment function due to the real load, divided by EI and all integrated over dx. So to proceed with the example, we need to calculate the I value for the beam. We're given the E value, 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared, and we need to calculate the I value from here and the two moment functions. With this method, where we place the unit load, or draw the cantilever where we place the unit load is at the point that we want to know the deflection so that's at the tip of the cantilever and in the direction that we wish to find out the deflection and in this case I know that the cantilever will be dipping downwards so I'll put a unit load pointing in the downwards direction so the first thing to do is calculate our moment functions And so for the real loading, we had a cantilever. So with a cantilever, to avoid calculating the reactions, we can take moments from going from the right-hand side to the place where we make our arbitrary cut. And we would have a shear force at this point, which we know isn't important as it will go through the line. The line of action will go through the point where we make our cut. We have our 10 kilonewton load and we have a moment coming from the rest of the beam and that's the moment function with the position x along the beam so taking moments about x so this point here we have going in the clockwise direction we have m of x and that's negative we also have the 10 kilonewton load, which again will be going in a clockwise direction. So negative 10 kilonewtons multiplied by the distance x. And for this to be in equilibrium, that must be equal to zero. And therefore we can say that the moment function m of x equals minus 10 x. We do exactly the same thing for our unit load. And as we've stated, make a cut, we're applying our unit load at the point where we wish to know the deflection in the direction that we wish to know the deflection. So that could be horizontal, vertical, etc. And so again, we have the distance x to the point where we're making our cut. We could have a shear force, but it will go directly through. The line of action will go directly through the point where we're taking moments. And we have a little moment m of x due to the unit load. Again, taking moments about the point x, we have minus m of x minus 1 dot x equals 0. And therefore, we can say that m of x equals minus 1 x so we have both of our moment functions that we need we now need to calculate our second moment of area and in this case we're given the dimensions so that was 300 millimeters and 
100 millimeters and for this cross section the centroid is going through the center of the height so 150 millimeters we don't need to worry about the parallel axis theorem when we can simply state that second moment area equals b d cubed upon 12 and that's from strength of materials so b equals 100 times by 300 cubed all divided by 12 gives us that our second moment of area equals 225 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. And because our equation involves EI, we might as well multiply these out now. So E times I is going to be the 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared multiplied by 225 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4 and therefore we get that e times i equals 45 times 10 to the 3 kilonewton meter squared And now with all of the data involved, we can now proceed to calculate the deflection at B from the virtual work or unit load formula. So that was delta B is equal to the integral of MM over EI dx. And so remember, that's between naught and L. So let's take the one over EI outside of the brackets because that's constant. And we multiply the two moment functions. So the little m was minus one X. So minus X multiplied by minus 10 X. And that's all over dx we can simplify this so we have a minus and a minus when we multiply together so we're going to get a plus 10x squared and we'll be evaluating that between 0 and 8 meters so this is now equal to I'm going to take the 10 outside the bracket as well so 10 over 45 times 10 to the 3 and then integrating the x squared so we get x cubed upon 3 we evaluate that at 0 and 8 and we get that our delta b equals 37.9 millimeters But we also wish to find out what the rotation at the end of this cantilever is. And reminding ourselves of the formula we're going to use. So we had a 1 dot theta equals the integral between 0 and L of M theta multiplied by M over E I D X. And in this formula, we already know EI, we already know the real bending moment function, capital M. And so we all that we need to find is our moment function M theta. So again, if we draw a free body diagram of our cantilever and make an arbitrary cut, we can, at the cut, we have a moment m theta which will vary with the distance x potentially and we're going to apply a unit moment at the tip so at the position where we want to find the rotation and in the direction where we want to find the rotation and for completeness we'll put the distance x to where we've made the cut so from our free body diagram we take moments about the point where we've made the cut and we can say that 
m theta of x is equal to plus one kilonewton meter. So it's constant along the beam. And we can now simply apply that into our formula. So phi to b is equal to the integral between naught and eight meters of minus 10 x. So we had a plus one m theta, but a minus 10 x for the real moment, capital M, divided by E i, all integrated over dx. So we get taking all the constant values outside of the brackets, we're going to get minus 10 over 45 times 10 to the 3, and that's kilonewton meter squared. And let's evaluate the integral. So x becomes x squared over 2. And we evaluate that between 0 and 8. And carrying out the calculations, we get minus 7.11 times 10 to the minus 3 radians. Okay, so we've got a minus value for this rotation. And so if we look, we applied our unit load going in an anti-clockwise direction. So because we've got a minus value out, that actually means that our cantilever is rotating clockwise. And that makes perfect sense that we expect if we have a cantilever with a point load, we expect the deflection to go down and the rotation now is going in this direction so it's going in a clockwise direction and that we're presuming to be ne negative for a relatively simple example of a point load on a cantilever there are some standard results which you can find tables of these standard results from quickly uh, doing an internet search for your answers for both the deflection and the rotation, or you can use the double integration method as a second way of verifying your results. One other remark about this example is that the moment function for the real case and the unit load case were just multiples of each other. This isn't always the case. So we can imagine examples and there's a tutorial in the in the notes which would test the understanding. So this is a hint of how to do that tutorial problem. So the tutorial problem is a simply supported beam so pin supported on the left hand side roller supported on the right hand side and it has a load of 10 kilonewtons and we wish to find the deflection at some other point c so the left hand side was labeled a the right hand side was labeled b and you're given dimensions in the problem that the distance from A to C is two meters, the distance from C to the application of the load is two meters, and the distance from the load to B is also two meters. So a couple of things come up with this, is that the moment functions vary differently, so we can imagine we're also going to get the same geometry, the same support conditions for this problem, but we're going to apply a unit load at the point where we want to find the deflection in the direction that we want to find it. So our bending moment functions, I'm going to draw them on the tension side, are going to have discontinuities and for the real function be continuous between a and the application of point load and then continuous from the load to b 
whereas in the unit load our bending moment function will be discontinuous up until point C so continuous to point C we have a discontinuity and then it will change and be a different function as we go from C to B therefore when you evaluate the integrals what's best to do is evaluate the bending moments over three regions let's call them I I I and I I I and so when you do the integral so one dot delta equals the integral of M M over E I D X it's worth splitting this up into an integral between naught and two meters I'm not going to write the dx plus the integral between two and four meters and plus the integral between four and six meters and remembering that the moment functions are going to change as we go along so this m of x is going to be for region i and then this moment would be for region 2 or 3. And again, moment for the second region. And the same for the moment function. This will be applicable over the region between A and the point load. So this is I or I and I, I. And M again for this first region until you hit the point load however when we get to the third there's going to be a new bending moment from after the point load new bending moment function let's call that three for the different regions so and each one of these will be e i e i e i